The by election in Msambweni, which is scheduled to happen on 15th of December 2020, is going to make or break many political careers in this country. That by election is going to be a do or die for many politicians in this country. It's going to be a do or die for William Samairuto because he must win that election for him to gain the momentum. That by election is going to be a do or die for Raila Amolo Dinga because Raila Dinga must prove that the coastal region is still solidly behind him. That by election is going to be a do or die for Hassan Joho because Hassan Joho wants to run for the presidency of the Republic of Kenya and he must prove that he can deliver the seat to the ODM party. That particular election is going to be a do or die for the allies of the Duty President William Samuel Ruto who defected from ODM party like Aisha Jomwa because without winning that election they are likely to lose momentum and that particular election is also going to be a do or die for President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. Uhuru Kenyatta must ensure that the party they support, which is ODM party, emerge victorious. Because without doing that, the BBI, which is likely to support, is not going to gain momentum. And the IBC has already cleared eight individuals to participate in that election. But I want to narrow down to three individuals because I strongly believe that out of those three individuals, one of them is going to emerge as the winner. The IBC has cleared the wiper candidate, Sheikh Mahmoud, who is a local business person there, very popular. The IBC has also cleared the ODM candidate, Omari Eid Boga. The IBC has also cleared the independent candidate who is going to be supported by Tangatanga, Tanga, basically the Tangatanga Tanga candidate, Faisal Abdallah. Those three gentlemen are going to face off in Musambweni. And just like I said, Musambweni general, the Musambweni by election is going to create or destroy political careers of many politicians in this country. And it's going to be watched very closely. Because number one, that by election, is going to determine who controls the region. Is the region still behind Raila Amolodinka? Or has the region gone with the deputy president and the Hasland nation? All those answers, all the answers to those questions will be answered on 15th. Number two, William Ruto's allies who defected from ODM party, the legs of Aisha Jomwa, the legs of uh, the Cliffy North member of parliament, Owen Bayer, Owen Bayer and others must ensure that they deliver victory to the independent candidate. Without doing that, they are doomed. Number three, that election is going to set the momentum for the Building Bridges Initiative campaigns. If the ODM candidate who is being supported by Jubilee Party is going to lose that election, I can assure you the coastal region is going to oppose that building bridges initiative. So they must make sure that the ODM candidate wins the seat. Number four, William Ruto's machinery is likely to test it there. He tried it in Kibra, but the system played with the duty president. So he has another chance of testing his machinery, especially outside Nairobi and outside his region, in a field where he believes he has gained a lot of support. So he must test his, his machinery there. Number five, Hassan Joho and Amazon Kingi factor is also going to be at play. Hassan Joho wants to be the president of the Republic of Kenya. Amazon Kingi is also fighting so hard to remain the kingpin of the coastal region. And for those who followed uh, the ODM Brigade's rally over on, fr on Friday, Amazon Kingi was missing. So let us wait and see whether he's going to make an appearance or not. But the presence of Amazon Kingi and Hassan Joho on this particular matter is going to play a key role in that by election. Let me just take you through some statistics a bit. Msambwini constituency is in Kwale County. Kwale County has four constituencies. 
And this is how they performed in the last election. There is Msambweni, which was won by the ODM candidate, Suleiman Dori. Then there is Lunga Lunga. Lunga Lunga went with Jubilee. Mwashetani. Although most people believe that Mwashetani was a beneficiary of the, the, the computer algorithm, the, the, 30, the 54% algorithm. Then there is Matuga constituency. Matuga constituency was won by ANC. Honorable Tandaza. Tandaza was initially in ODM party. He was not given the certificate. Then he jumped to ANC party and won that seat. Then there is the Kinango. Kinango has Benjamin Tayari, ODM party. So in short, in uh, Kuali, Kuali County, out of the four constituencies, ODM party won two, ANC party won, Jubilee, ANC party won, Jubilee won, which means NASA won three. And when you go further to the gubernatorial seat or election, the Jubilee candidate, Salim Vuria, won overwhelmingly with over 65%. The ODM candidate was number three, and Chirao Ali Mokwere of Wiper was number two. They were both at around 16%. So Jubilee candidate, who was previously in ODM, Salim Vuria, won overwhelmingly. The senator was elected on ODM ticket, Isa Juma, the son to the former senator, Boy Juma Boy. And then the women rep. Now in uh, Kuali County, all the four elected members of parliament had actually drifted from ODM party and were now supporting the duty president William Simeruto, including the late Suleiman Dori. Although by the time Dori was, before Dori died, he had made a comeback to ODM party. But the fact of the matter is that today as we speak, out of the three remaining MPs, all of them are with the deputy president William Samiruto. And when Ruto unveiled their candidate in Karen, all the three members of parliament were present. So those are very interesting statistics. Now let us go further and dig into a bit of uh, into a bit of the the voting there. Msambwini has sixty eight thousand six hundred and twenty one registered voters. In the last election, this is how they voted because we had four four wards there. This is how they voted. There is Okunda Ward. Okunda Ward voted for ODM candidate. So they have a registered vote of 21,500. This is where the independent candidate who is being supported by William Ruto comes from. Okunda Ward. The only disadvantage he has is that Okunda is actually considered to be kind of a town. Then there is uh, the Gobato Bogwe Ward. This is where the ODM candidate comes from. In the last election, they voted for ODM candidate. So they have a registered voters of 17,500. Then there is the Kinondo ward. In the last election, this ward voted very funnily. There was a tie between the Jubilee candidate and the ODM candidate. So a by-election was occasioned and the ODM candidate won that seat easily. And then there is the Ramisi. The Ramisi was also won by the Chama Cha Mashinani. The guy who won it was previously in Odia. So basically, of all these four wards in uh, Msambweni, Odium party took the lead. Now from those statistics, we can easily tell one thing. That Odium party, as per the last general election, was actually the dominant political party in the region. In the last election, Odium party, the, the presidential candidate, the NASA presidential candidate, won Kuali overwhelmingly. In fact, in the entire coastal region, despite the fact that Kuali voted for Jubilee governor, voted for a Jubilee member of parliament, it's only in Kuali where ODM got the highest percentage in terms of votes in the last general election. I think Jubilee party did not even, did not even get to 15% in Kuali. So those are the facts. But other factors are likely to play in this particular by-election. Let's begin with the WEPA candidate. The WEPA candidate is a local businessman. WEPA party 
is hoping to win this particular by election and when i was in msambweni the other day i was trying to get some facts around Wepa party is very keen on winning this seat because i know I, I know most people are not aware that Wepa party did not qualify for political parties funds and they are only remaining with one seat so if Wepa party is going to win this particular seat then they are going to qualify for that political party's funds so kalonzo musyoka is doing everything possible to ensure that the candidate will emerge victorious so that they can qualify for that funding remember because they had a coalition agreement with odm in the previous in the previous years odm party used to share with them especially during the court time used to share with them this money but in after the last general election odm party refused to share with them that money so they are hoping to win just this seat so that they can qualify for that money and i'm told kalonzo even approached the duty president william samaruto not to sponsor a candidate but instead support his candidate in msambwe so that's how serious it is now let's get to the odm party omari boga Omari Boga was elected as a councillor first then in the in 2013 he was elected as an MC in the last general election Omari Boga contested for the parliamentary seat on ODM ticket but he failed at the nomination in fact it is alleged that ODM party rigged out rigged out Omari Boga and even Hassan Joho yesterday and even Hassan Joho acknowledged this on Friday in Msambweni. He told the, 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 the people who attended the rally that in the last election, Wali Chochiatu, and of course within ODM party, those who followed the politics very closely will agree that Suleiman Dori did not defeat Omar Boga during the ODM nominations. But Omar Boga then decided and contested on an independent ticket. He emerged with 11,000 votes against Dory, who got around 21,000. So that was that's going to give him a head start. And of course, he's also very popular. He comes from uh, one of the most politically active wards in the area. And one of his bases is, uh, is actually this, uh, this Okonda ward, where Faisal is born. And if you listen to Hassan Joho the other day, he was saying that for him, he's supporting Omar Boga because he knows where Omar Boga was born. He knows his home. The people there knows where Omar Boga can be found, not the other candidates. So he has an, an advantage, and I'm sure with the support of the handshake. And this is why I'm saying that these guys are likely to teach William Ruto's political lesson. With the support of the system, the security apparatus, I am sure this guy, this guy is likely to emerge victorious. Of course, he's a strong candidate. And now let's get to the independent candidate, Faisal Abdallah. This guy is related or is a cousin to the late Suleiman Dori. He used to work with Suleiman Dori as his personal assistant, but he was kicked out because of corruption. I don't know how that case ended. So is at the initial stages he was the favorite to succeed the brother and if you listen to to, to 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 succeed the cousin and if you listen to tangatanga brigades when they were in msambweni hassan omar was very clear that in uh, homa bay when kajuang died the brother took over he was very clear that in uh, kibra when okoth died the brother took over and they also believed that if odium was fair then they should have supported this other guy. So those are some of the factors which are at play. But I know there's one main factor which is going to play a role in this particular election. President Ruk Kenyatta and Raila Odinga are going to watch and monitor the by-election very closely. Because without watching that particular by-election, then it can go the other way. And that would mark the end of the Building Bridges Initiative process. I don't think President Ruk Kenyatta and Raila Odinga would be keen on allowing Msambweni to end 
or to mark the end of the Building Bridges Initiative campaigns. So I'm sure at the end of the day, the ODM candidate is going to win. And by ODM candidate winning, the duty president is going to learn so many lessons. The first lesson he's going to learn is that he's not going to attract serious aspirants from the coastal region after that particular by-election. If he's going to win, the rest assured that the deputy president is going to emerge much stronger. So that's the first thing. Number two, I am also sure that the system is, will try to scatter any attempt by the deputy president to test his machinery in some way. That's going to happen. And number four, number three, I also believe that Raila Odinga is going to do everything possible. He's going to unleash the dreaded ODM votes, vote protection unit. They are going to descend in Musambweni. I saw them on Friday, and I can assure you, it's not going to be easy for the duty president. But on the other side, the duty president and his allies are going to go to win this particular election. Let us wait and see how everything is going to unfold on 15th of December. But I want you to mark this. It's going to be a political lesson for the duty president and his political allies from the coastal region. I want to hear your thoughts on this matter, especially if you come from that particular region. Thank you guys. And if you're watching this video for the first time, please take a minute or two, take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Thank you guys. And please, may you have a good day.